I want to see Jesus. And it's a strange thing and not a strange thing to ask for because many times we want the Lord to do so many things, but I think we have to be careful with this question because what you're asking for might be too much for you. What you're asking for, you might be biting off more than you can chew. Because when you're seeing Jesus, we often think we're going to see the Jesus of legend, the Jesus that we saw in Sunday school. In fact, many of us carry around that, that image of him, of, of, of the way it's been fed to us, but they never show us the other side. I, and I thank God for that movie, The Passion of Christ, because it showed us graphically exactly what being the Messiah is about. It's not often a pretty thing. And if you want to see Jesus today, if you want to see Jesus at any time in your life, I say you got to be prepared. You got to be prepared, prepared because it's not a pretty sight. You got to be prepared because it's not what you thought it would be. You got, you got to be prepared because he just might shock you. You got to be prepared because seeing Jesus, you just might see yourself. Father, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up here this morning, oh God. I just ask, Lord, that you make preaching easy. I just ask, Lord, that you enable me to, to, to transmit this word in, in a way, oh Father God, that will show you, Lord, that I be reduced and even disappear, but your word be used, oh God, to do what you intended it to do. Have your way in our lives. Touch the unspoken things, the things that we want, don't even want to think about this morning. Touch those things, oh Father God, and bring them out to the light, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. And in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a funny thing when we say we, we want to see Jesus. Um, I'm coming from John 12. And in John 12, there are these, these Greeks. They're not actually Greeks. They're Jews who become, who, who become Greek citizens or they become Grecian in, the, in their ways. And many times, even us, we, we, we may be from a certain place, but we may branch out even involuntarily. And, and, but we still have to come back to whom we really are. And this is during Passover, and, and, and Passover for, for the Jews was a time in which they would celebrate. It's like Mardi Gras, Thanksgiving, New Year's, and all these things. And these two Greeks said they wanted to see Jesus. And they spoke to Andrew, and they spoke to, to Philip. And Philip and Andrew went to the Lord. And the Lord actually told the whole world off in, in, in his answer. But he had to do that because, because you see, what was happening at, um, at that time is that they want to kill Lazarus. They want to kill Lazarus because Jesus had raised him from the dead. And, and the people in power were angry because they were Sadducees and Pharisees. And the Sadducees believed that there was no life after death. So Jesus proved them wrong, not in argument, not in deed. That's a message to you. Don't worry about argument with people. You do what the Lord tells you to do. Let your actions speak louder than words. And that's how Jesus moves. He's not concerned so much as to whether or not you can hear him, as to whether or not you can even see him. But he's going to do things that make it unmistakable in your life that he is the ruler, as he said he would be in the scriptures. And they said they wanted to come see Jesus, but they didn't know what they were asking for. They wanted to see Jesus because he did a miracle. They wanted to see Jesus because it, they thought it was a circus thing. They wanted to see Jesus because they had up in their own minds what seeing the Lord was, was, was going to be. But the thing about seeing Jesus, when we lay our eyes on him, we might see our own sin. We might see our own shame. We might see our own failures. We might see in him our own depression. We might see how we used people. We might see how people used us. We might see everything that has gone wrong in our lives. We might see the, 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 the things that we've been rasting with that's been whipping us. We might see the things that gone wrong when we were one, when we were 10, when we were 25. We might see the things that were, that gone wrong yesterday and, and, and to live and to move and, and to live this life. Sometimes you got to put those things aside to, to, in order to remain, to, to, to maintain equilibrium. You see, we have to learn how, we must learn how to put those things behind 
behind us. But with Jesus, there is no forgetting. Jesus remembers every tear that has fallen from our eyes. Jesus remembers every touch that was unwarranted. Jesus remembers every step you should not have taken. Jesus remembers all those bad, sick relationships we had that went wrong. Jesus remembers every night that it went wrong. Jesus remembered how we still yearned for, for the thing. So by seeing Jesus, we may see something that we're just not ready for. You see, um, Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 13 that we look through the glass darkly, but when the time has come, we shall see face to face and be known as we are also known. So seeing Jesus might not be something that, that we really want to see. I'm reminded of even the, 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 the three wise men, the, the three magi. They came to see Jesus. They, they, they saw a star in the sky and they had an arduous journey. They trekked and they, they walked and they, and, they, and they got to the place where they could see Jesus. And they found that to even see Jesus, they had to first deal with the stench. Hear me now. Jesus was not in a manger. He was probably in a cave and that's where they kept the animals. So the three wise men, the three magi, they smelled it before they got there. And one of the reasons why we may not want to get too close to Jesus, just, but just so far and no further, is because of the stench. Just because of the stench of the things that we have done. The stench of what has happened to us. Even it's the stench of our own disbelief. But the wise men came with a purpose. They wanted to see the Messiah. And as they journeyed beyond the stench and walking into and walking over that which smelled, when they looked, they saw the Messiah and they gave their gifts. One of the great problems in, in how we view Jesus is because we have to we think we have to make up how he might look. We may claim he's this. We may claim he's that because we make up our own vision of Jesus to make it easy. But the Bible is clear that, that Jesus had no beauty. It says so in Isaiah 53 that, that he was not comely. He had no beauty that we would honor him, that he was despised among men. Why? Because when they look at him, they saw their own shame. So if you want to see Jesus today, you're going to have to deal with certain circumstances of your life. In fact, you're going to have to deal with them all. You see, there, there, there's often people who, who think that they have got it all together, but he resists the proud and he's only interested in a contrite and broken heart. And when you see Jesus and you're looking upon him, the, in, in fact, Josephus was an eyewitness. He saw Jesus in the flesh. And, and, and Josephus, what Josephus wrote is directly related to what we see in Isaiah. And what Josephus says, and, and our Jewish brothers contest this, but that's okay. But what Josephus said that, that coincides with, with Isaiah is that Jesus was black, that Jesus had a big nose, that Jesus was ugly, that Jesus had a hunchback, and Jesus was a small person. He said he was short. People were not that tall. I would have been in good company. Jesus, Jesus was not that tall. And this is the Messiah. This, this is what the three kings saw when they got there. This is what the three magi saw. They saw a deformity. And that's the way God speak. And I, and I right now, I speak into anybody who has a disfigurement or a deformity. Because these are the things that, that become the thorn in your side that, that keep you from being arrogant and keeps you closer to God. The reason why we don't want to see Jesus is because of our internal deformities, our spiritual deformities, our emotional deformities. And Jesus will reveal himself that way to us. By seeing Jesus in, 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 uh, in that way, he's not a, a boogeyman. He's not trying to scare you. He's not trying to, 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 to spurn you away. What he's saying is that everything you did wrong, I'm carrying it. Everything that happened to you, I am carrying it. Every step you took wrong, I am carrying it. Every night you cried yourself to sleep, I am carrying it. Even if you, you were in the crack house, he's saying to you right this morning, I am carrying it. Even if you abused your body, I am carrying it. And the problem is we don't want to see who we really are. So when you say you want to see Jesus, you best be prepared to see yourself. The Bible further says that, 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 that when Jesus spoke after they said they wanted to see him, Jesus said the hour has come. And if you get to the point where you want to see Jesus, hear me, if you 
have already recited Romans 10 and 9, that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, the next step for you is to see Jesus. And many of us stay within this purgatory period that we can say the incantation because that's what it is if you don't want to go all the way. It's, it's just dabbling in, in, in biblical words to try to look good, but you have to go all the way. What does that mean? You're going to have to face the things that were that was wrong with you. You're going to have to face the things that went wrong in your life. You're going to have to face the things that you did wrong. And Jesus doesn't even care. He's, he's carrying these things and he wants to show you because he wants to make your confession right. And Jesus said, my hour has come. Jesus didn't care that they wanted to kill him. Jesus didn't care that they wanted to, to even kill Lazarus. It just was not going to happen because his hour has come. And if you get to the point where you want to see Jesus, these are the words you're going to hear from the Lord. My hour has come. He told them that, 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 it, that unless a wheat of grain falls to, to the ground and dies, it shall not bear fruit. He's saying to you that he's going to take those same issues, those same problems. He's going to take that depression. He's going to take that fear. He's going to take that anxiety. He's going to take those nights of no sleep. He's going to take what lust did to you, what, what you did with greed. He's going to take away the, the, the envious things, the, the doubt, the shame, the, 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 the things that happen that you don't even want to think about. He's going to take them all and he is going to take them into hell where they belong. But he shall be resurrected to bear much fruit. Jesus said, furthermore, while they're looking at him, while they're in his face, and this is what Jesus is saying to you today. This is what he's about. He's about taking on your sins and he's about making them white as snow. He's not about condemning you. It's just that sometimes we don't want to face the things that went wrong. The question is, again, do you really want to see Jesus? And this was. And the people of God should have gotten the hint. Remember now, uh, Passover was not so much about Egypt. My people, being free from shackles is not about being free from shackles. It's whether or not you realize that Jesus is Lord. And, and, and the problem that they had, they didn't understand that Passover was a hint. And the, the hint of Passover is this. It takes the death of the firstborn to, to make this thing happen. It takes the Messiah, the death of, 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 of the Lord Jesus Christ. Passover is just another way of saying John 3.16. But they didn't get it. They turned it into a party. They turned it into a circus. They gathered around Jesus. They wanted to see Jesus only because of his miracles. Miracles. And we are the same way. We bring to Jesus our needs. We bring to Jesus our problems. We bring to Jesus the things that we, we want him to do for us. But do we want to really see the, the person that we are? Do we want, want to see the Lamb of God? Do we really want to accept his deformities? And do we want to accept that his deformities are our fault? Jesus spoke about how, how our foxes have holes, but the man of God has no place to lay his head. That's our fault, you see. The people then treated him as badly as we treat him now. And when he's talking about a, a place to lay his heart, is a, his, his head is a place near you. Do you really want to see Jesus? And as Jesus spoke these things about a wheat dying and all these things, the, the crowd began to argue with him. And how many times when Jesus has asked you to do something and your soul militates against it. Right now he's asking you to do something. I bet you your soul militates against it. Right now there's something and on the other side of that something that you're supposed to do. You feel it's, it's just a bridge too far. You feel it's, it's, it may be the devil. But let me tell you, you know good and well why you are stuck on this side of, of the Jordan. Because to get over, you're going to have to drop fear. You Often we don't move because of shame and, and Jesus is, 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 is telling them to, to, to stop the foolishness. What he said to them to get them to the other side of Jordan because they didn't believe that the Messiah had to die. They didn't believe that the Messiah should be ugly. They didn't believe that being the, the, the Messiah should be a thing that, that pricks their hearts. They didn't believe these things. They believed that the Messiah would come and make everything all right. It's easy to believe a, a Jesus who's going to do the external things. It's easy to believe a Jesus is going to vanquish our enemies. It's easy to believe Jesus when we're in distress, but it's hard to believe Jesus when, we're the, when we are the one in the wrong. The Lord's Prayer 
demands that we say, forgive us our trespasses. Huh? As we forgive those who trespass against us. And many of us, the speaker included, are wrestling with it. Because it's hard. We're human. It's hard. It's difficult. But we just got to get closer to Jesus. If we get closer to Jesus and understand these things, I'm telling you, it's going to happen for you. There are some things you think you can't do. Peter didn't think he could walk on water. Well, he thought he could, but then he doubted and he sank. Hear me now. Uh, Paul never thought that, that, that he would be under the constraint of the Lord, but it happened to him because he was willing to even hear the Lord. Uh, you see, seeing Jesus is, is, is not for you to feel like you're Lord up above because when the people who really got the, the, the sense, the gist of Jesus, got a, a hold of what Jesus is, is all about, they were willing to lose their lives. What am I saying to you? I'm not saying jump off a bridge. I'm saying he, you, once you've got a hold to Jesus, you're not concerned about pride. Huh? You will cry on the worship line. Yes, you would. Huh? You, you, would, you, would, you would give it up all to God any way you can. You don't care how, how, how it look to other people. Hmm? You're going to conduct yourself in such a fashion that a phone call won't let you fall, that, uh, that going to a certain store won't, won't, won't let you fall because you are sold out. And as Jesus further argued with, with this crowd, he says that if, if any man wish to serve him, hear me, this is the conversation God is having, Jesus is having to you when you are able to see him face to face. He says, if you will serve me, if you want to serve me, and he's saying that you must follow him. You must receive him. You must take up your cross and follow him. This is a lesson. You're not to take up other people's cross and criticize. You're not to talk about people who, who do things that you don't like. You're not to point out in, in the Bible who is wrong and who is right. He's talking about your cross. Seeing Jesus, you're going to see your sins. To follow Jesus, it's about your cross. And that's where the problem lies with us. We think we might want to see Jesus. But when you see Jesus, you're going to see a thing that goes against everything you've heard. When you see Jesus, you're going to see the beam in your eye. And that's often too hard for, for us to understand. But the Lord God is also saying that if you can deal with the stench, if you can deal with your failures, if you can deal with the things that broke your heart, if you can just embrace them for a minute, if, if you can just acknowledge that it's, it's happened to you, if you can just get out of denial and, and realize that, that what you see with, with the Lord is, is him carrying these things away, and if you can just say to him, yes, Lord, if you can just say, I open my heart to you, Lord, if you can just say, I trust you, Lord, what's going to happen Things are going to jump out of you that a, that a herd of pigs could not stand and they need to. We can't let the man of the Gadarenes be better than us. He saw Jesus from afar, but we're able to see Jesus face to face. And if you want to see Jesus, be prepared for not just deliverance, but hear me now, repentance. And, and that is a word that, that I think it's it's even deeper because you can be delivered and go back. But if you can repent and go back, but if you really hold on to the way these these foolish apostles did, and we know they were foolish, Peter denied him three times before the cock crowed. Yes, he did. The rest ran away. Even his mother stood afar off because they didn't want to see. It was too much for them to see Jesus go through. See Jesus grow through. Why? Because it is love in action. The Lord loves you. Sometimes, mothers, you will forget to dress yourself and take care of yourself and your hair is standing up on the head, your head and the kids want you to stay home and close the door because you're going to embarrass them. That's how it is with Jesus, that he has let his hair go. He, Jesus, hear me, Jesus only had a cloak. Jesus di didn't always have access to fresh running water. Jesus was misshapen. Jesus was not attractive. The word of God says so. Jesus had all these things that were wrong with him. He had all those things that, that are wrong with him even to today. He has wounds in his hands. He has a wound in his side. He has wounds in, in, in his feet. Why? Because he loves you. And we can't say stay over there Jesus because you don't want no one to see And Sometimes we don't want to see that we love him. But if you want to see Jesus, if you want to see him, in the end, if you want to really get to a point where you can say, I am ready. And many, many times right now, 
I know for a fact there are many prophecies that's been spoken over your life. And the reason probably why it's not happening is because you're not ready to see Jesus. When I say you're not ready to see Jesus, you're not ready to deal with who you are. And the minute you're ready to deal with who you are and you accept yourself as deformed internally as Jesus is externally, you break through. You, you get it done. Enoch was raptured. Hear me now. Elijah was raptured. They couldn't find Moses' body because even after all the mistakes Moses made, he still wanted to see God. And, and I say to you, make it your business to see God. Make it your business to get to him no matter what. In your prayers, huh? take the time to ask for these things because in all our getting, we need to get an understanding. And the understanding we need is who we are. And once you accept who Jesus is, life changes. Jesus spoke all these things from Bethany. And Bethany meant house of affliction. Even if, hear me, you are living in a house of affliction today, even if going home is not a place where you want to be, Jesus is saying that he came out of the house of affliction too. And he laid down some of the most powerful words in the gospel from the house of affliction. It's not your external things. It's whether or not your heart is right towards the Lord. Don't let the, the righteousness of the Pharisees outdo you. They didn't want to see Jesus as he really is because they would have saw themselves. And the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, wanted to kill him and Lazarus because they thought they'd lose position with Rome. And many times we put the Lord aside because we don't want to lose position with Rome. Being with the Lord might cost you everything. It might cost you a relationship. It might, it might cost you everything that, that, that you use to get through from day to day. We forget that Jesus said, that don't think he's come to bring peace, but a sword. And that sword is intended to separate mother from father, from, from, from daughter from mother-in-law, to, to separate things, bone from marrow. It's about you, and it's not about the things that's been propping you up. And if you want to see Jesus, you got to realize that it's about you and him. This is a, a personal thing. This is a personal relationship. This is, a, this is a rhema time for you, that there's no more time to be playing around this thing, dancing around the thing that we're denying. And we're, what we're denying is that the Lord God suffered because of us, he is misshapen and ugly because of what we have done. And if we want to come out of the, come out of this thing alive, to eternal life, you see, Jesus said that that if you love your life, and many of us do like, like the Pharisees, if you love your life, you will lose it. But he says furthermore that if you hate your life, he doesn't mean hate it, despise your life, but if you put it secondary, tertiary, he's saying you'll have eternal life. So you're trying to hold on to life, you lose it. You live the way the Lord says you're supposed to live, you gain eternal life. What would it profit a man? You know this, say it with me. If he should gain the world and lose his you soul. You want to see Jesus? Then it's time to save your soul. You just can't rest upon the, the words that you use because if you use them wrong and you don't want to go all the way, it's an incantation. He's about obedience and not witchcraft. He's, he wants the right type of sacrifice. Seeing Jesus might be a hideous endeavor. Seeing Jesus might be a bit much for you. But I tell you, the race is not for the swift, but for, for those who endure to the end. Go through, no matter how bad it hurts. You take that inventory. You make a list of the things that are wrong with you and that's wrong with your life. And you give them up to Jesus and you say, open my eyes. Let the scales fall from my eyes. It's, it's too late for us to be still eating Eden's fruit. All that exists, as we know in this world, is the lust of the, eye, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, if I'm saying it right, and the pride of life. And we can't live like that anymore. We're Christians. We're ministers. And it's time for us to face it. It's time for us to come out from amongst them, and to really press on towards Calvary. We're going to take up our cross, we're going to go Gotha, and we're going to show the enemy that everything that he's done, everything that he's done against you, my people, everything that you see happening in the world today, even if this nation crumbles, everything that's going wrong right now will not work. And what will happen is you shall come through as pure gold. It says so in the Bible, and I believe it.
Press on through, my people. See Jesus, and you shall be welcomed. Father, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We lift you up. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your goodness. We thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, God. Enable us, O oh, Father God, to see you on some good getting up morning, Lord, that we shall see you, O oh, Father God. David said, is that one thing he wishes to, 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 to inquire of the Lord? We want to inquire of you, O oh, Father God. We wish to see you face to face. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. And in your holy name we say, Amen.